Now God's name was not given to him by anyone else except himself. He gave it to himself and he's saying, whenever you hear this name, I want you to think of me and no one else. Whenever you hear this name, I want you to get a picture in your mind. I want you to understand what I'm like. And so he gave himself a name and then told us to hallow it. And part of hallowing it means that we give it to no one else. That's one way in which the prayer is answered. If we're going to keep God's name holy as it ought to be kept holy, we should never apply it to another person. Hallowed be thy name. What is God's name? That's the question. There are three things I want to say this morning. And the first is, God is not God's name. God is not God's name. The word translated God in the, New, in the Old Testament is from the Hebrew word El, El, which simply means a supernatural power. It's exactly the same word as I heard on the lips of Arabs when we lived in Aden, Allah, which means a supernatural power. And it's a word you'll find used elsewhere in the world. We use the word God almost as a name for God simply because for centuries in this country we've been taught that there is only one. That in fact the word God is simply a description. It is not the name. And therefore it doesn't really matter whether a person believes in God or not. It depends which God they believe in. And if you went up to a Hindu immigrant from India and said, do you believe in God? He would rightly say, which one? And you would then have to name the God you were thinking of in your question. Now, this was the situation in the Bible days. And Moses brought up in the court of Pharaoh knew perfectly well that in Egypt they believe in many gods. And so when he was sent to Egypt... And God said, tell them I'm going to get them out of there. He said, well, who shall I say called? I don't even know your name. And I don't know what to say. And God said, I will tell you my name. The second thing I want to say is this. We do not know his name today. Nobody does. Nobody knows. Now, let me tell you what I mean by that. This may seem surprising when I can also say that his name is used 6,700 times in this book. Yet I don't know it. Nearly 7,000 times you can read the name of God here and yet you don't know it. Neither do I. Now, here's a conundrum for you if you like. Let me explain. It was given to Moses at the burning bush. And God said, now, Moses, I will tell you my name. And when they ask you, you tell them this. And he then said something, and none of us really knows what it is. Written down in the Old Testament are four letters. Four letters. J-H-W-H. -H. That's all we've got. We don't know how to spell it. We don't know how to pronounce it. And we're not completely sure of its meaning. I say we don't know how to spell it, and I've just given you the four letters, but you realize that that's an unpr unpronounceable word. The letters in between are missing, as in normal Hebrew writing. Those who read it at the time know perfectly well what came in between. Some people have said, well, all right, let's put in our own letters, and so they've put in an E, an O, and an A in that order, and they've got Jehovah. But of course, you could switch that round and put Johavi, or you could have put it any way you like. So what I'm saying is we don't even know how to spell it. Furthermore, we don't know how to pronounce it because J is certainly not pronounced in Hebrew as a J, but as a Y. And W is pronounced not as a V, but as a W. And so the nearest that scholars can get to it is Yahweh. Yahweh. Is that his name? See the problem? Well, now, surely the answer to the problem is to make for the nearest Jew and say, would you tell us how to pronounce this word? But the tragedy is that for a whole period of centuries, the Jews never pronounced it, and even they cannot tell you how, how to say it. Now, you see what a problem this is raising. How can we exalt his name together when we don't even know how to say it? How can we say, hallowed be thy name, when we don't even know what it is? And in fact, it's a name that we hardly ever use in worship. Why did the Jews stop saying this name? Well, a fear turned into a phobia. There are many Christians who are so afraid of becoming worldly that they have contracted out of the world, and the fear has become a phobia. 
And the Jews, when they read the third commandment, they saw this, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You must never use it in a wrong way. The Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. And they thought the safest way was never to mention it. And the fear, which was a healthy fear of using the name wrongly as when you hit your wrong nail with a hammer, the fear became a phobia. And by the time of our Lord, they hardly ever used the name of God. They still knew how to say it, but they hardly dared to use it. And if somebody used it, they wait, waited for lightning from heaven to strike them dead. And so it died right out. So even the Jews can't say it. Well, can we understand what it meant, these four letters, J-H-W-H? Can we understand what it means? Yes, I think we can. It comes from the verb haya, which means to be. And therefore, you must express it in something like this. Here are three alternatives in the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. I am who I am. I am what I am. I will be what I will be. Now, you could choose any of those, but you've got the message. It means I am. Now, what a peculiar name. I am. What does that say to you? I want to say that I believe God gave this name to himself for two reasons. One was for what it did say and one was for what it didn't say. And he chose it very carefully. What does it say? It tells me first that God is unique. You can't ever give him a name that will compare him to anything or anyone else. I am what I am, he says. You can't give me a name. You can't describe me. I am me. I'm not like you. I'm unique. It tells me, secondly, that God is sufficient. You can't add anything to me. You can't subtract anything from me. I am self-sufficient. It tells me that God is unchangeable. I am one thing on Sunday and another thing on Monday morning, as my wife knows. So are you. I can't say I am, because I'm not always the same. I have my moods, and so have you. But God says I am. And this says to me that I'll meet the same God on Monday morning as I meet on Sunday evening. He's unchangeable. And indeed, at one point, the prophet Micah says, in the name of God, he says, I, Yahweh, change not. I am what I am. You may change, I don't. It tells me that God is holy, that he's different from everybody else. I am what I am. It tells me that God is eternal, that he always is, that he doesn't need to be made or to start. I am, that's a pretty long sentence and it goes on forever. So this is what the name says. But I believe that God chose this name for himself for what it didn't say. It was precisely because he could fill the name with meaning. The interesting thing is that in the Old Testament, God is forever adding a phrase to his name. He says, I'm not just Yahweh, I am what I am. I am Yahweh Jireh, which means I am your provider. And he said that to Abraham when Abraham nearly killed Isaac. He said, I am Yahweh Rapha, which means I am your healer. I am what I am, healer. He said, Yahweh Nisi, which means I am your banner when you're fighting a battle. You don't need a flag, you just need me. I am what I am, banner. He said, Yahweh Shalom, which means I am your peace. I am what I am, I'm your peace. He said, Yahweh Aha, which means one of the loveliest, I am your shepherd. He said, Yahweh Sidkanu, which means I am your righteousness. If you want to be good, you need me. And all these double names come through the pages of the Bible to us. So this is his name. That's why when the Jews went to the temple to worship God, they said, O oh, Yahweh our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Then why don't we use this name? Why don't we use it much more often than we do? Why do we say God so often and say this word so little? At least if we know roughly how to say it and roughly what it means. Wherever in the Old Testament you see the word Lord in capital letters, that's where the name of God was. And if they could spell it, it would be there. What then is God's name? Jesus called God Father. That's the first thing. And he said, when you pray, say Father. He didn't say, when you pray, say Jehovah. He said, when you pray, say Father. And that's the first big change that you notice when you step into the New Testament. 
The new name or the new title that is being used in prayer is Father, Father, Father. Jesus used it and he said to his followers, now you must use it. He had not been brought up to do so. This was something that Jesus introduced. It was something quite new. The Jews would never have dared to call God Dad. Never. They didn't even dare to say his name. Never mind be as intimate with the Almighty as that. But Jesus said, when you pray, say Father. And therefore the unique Christian prayer says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So the first thing that the name of God means to us is Father. And that word means so much more to us than Jehovah ever did to the Jews. But there's a deeper reason still why we don't use Jehovah, and it's this. Not only did Jesus call God Father, but, and this is what I try to say to every JW who comes to me, Jesus called himself. Jehovah. That is the most extraordinary thing in the New Testament to me. Jesus called himself Jehovah. Now where do I find that? Because the word Jehovah isn't in the New Testament. I told the last Jehovah's Witness to visit me, you come back to me when you can point the word Jehovah to me in the New Testament. Because that's where I live in the New Testament as the fulfillment of the Old. But it's not there. Well then why do I dare to say that Jesus called himself Jehovah? Well, listen, seven times Jesus said, I am, and added a description. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of heaven. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. Seven times he said this kind of thing. And you may not have noticed, but every time he said it in the hearing of the Jews, they immediately tried to kill him for it. Why? Why did they try to kill Jesus every time he said those words? The answer comes across in the English, even more so in the Greek. He used a particular expression which isn't just simply I am, but is better translated I, I am. If you're interested in Greek, ego, I, me. Well, I, me means I am, and ego means I. And he said, I, I am. And then he did precisely what Yahweh did in the Old Testament, told them what it meant. I, I am. What am I? I'm the bread of heaven. They got the message. There is no doubt about it that the Jews realized he was saying, Yahweh, I am. And then filling out the word, just as his father had done in the Old Testament. It was for this reason that they crucified Jesus, no other. It was for this reason that the Jews said he must be done to death. It was for this reason Whatever political charges they managed to produce at the trial, it was for this reason. And there are three occasions on which he used the phrase, I am, without even saying anything after it, which made it crystal clear. Let me give you the three occasions. One day Jesus said, in colloquial language, I'm paraphrasing, I was talking with Abraham the other day, and they said, you are not yet 50 years old. How do you know Abraham? And Jesus said, verily, verily, And in his language, that's amen, amen. Truly, truly, certainly, certainly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I, I am. Do you know what the next verse says? They took up stones to stone him. They got the message. I am Yahweh. I've always been. I am the eternal one. I am that I am. That's how I knew Abraham. The second occasion was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus was there praying, and there came soldiers from the temple to arrest him. And they came, now notice, they were temple soldiers, Jewish soldiers, not Romans. And they came to arrest him. And he said, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he replied this, I, I am. And literally they fell backward on the ground says that. Now why? Why should they fall on the ground? The answer is they expected him to be struck dead for saying it. The blasphemy of it. And so they finally took him away in chains when they saw that nothing happened to him, and of course nothing would. It was true. And they took him to his trial before Annas and Caiaphas, and they couldn't get the witnesses to agree. They couldn't get the evidence. So finally, the judge, quite illegally, asked the prisoner a leading question and said, tell us, I adjure you by the living God, which means you must answer, are you the son of God? And Jesus said, I, I am. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, you've heard him. 
We don't need witnesses. Here's a man who stands self-condemned for blasphemy. He calls himself Jehovah. That's what the trial was all about. And then it was just a matter of finding a charge that Pilate would accept. But you see, the real reason why Jesus was crucified by the Jews, and I say that by the Jews, was that he called himself Jehovah. I wish the Jehovah's Witnesses could grasp that simple point. I hope that you grasp it, because it means now the name is the name Jesus. It means that now when you go out to witness, you don't go on the words of Isaiah, you shall be my witnesses, says Jehovah. You go by the words of Acts 1.8. You shall receive power, said Jesus, and you'll be witnesses to me. And they went everywhere. They didn't preach Jehovah. They preached Jesus. But in preaching Jesus, they were preaching Jehovah. And this is the name. This is the name high over all in hell or earth or sky, angels and men before it fall and devils fear and fly. This is the name in which they baptized people. And one of the interesting things which is thought to be a discrepancy in the New Testament is not. Jesus said, go and baptize people in the name, singular, the name of Father, Son and Spirit. What name did they use when they fulfilled that command? You'll find in every case in the New Testament, they only baptized into the name of Jesus. Why? Because the name of the Father was Jesus. He's the Father of Jesus. The name of the Son, Jesus. The name of the Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. And one name covers all now. This is the new name. It was in this name that they healed people. Here was a man who had been lame for 40 years. And Peter said, if you want to know the power by which we heal this man, let it be known. It was not by our power. It was the power of the name of Jesus, of Nazareth. And you hallow the name of God when you hallow the name of Jesus. You are witnesses to Jehovah when you speak to the world about Jesus Christ. Can I sum it up like this? God now has a Christian name. And you have been given the privilege of calling God by his Christian name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And in Hebrew that reads, Oh, magnify Yahweh with me. And let us exalt his name together. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come. Lord Jesus.